Imagine there's a very simple answer to our energy crisis. Not by building more coal-fired plants like Midupi or Kusile, which have a lifespan of just 50 years anyway, but something completely out of the box. What if it was possible to generate electricity in a lab like this, from bacteria? You know those tiny little things that you can only see under a microscope? Well, that's the very question Bernard Smit of Waterkloof Hoer School in Pretoria asked himself two years ago. He's since proved that it is indeed possible. And all he used was a specific type of bacteria, fridge magnets, copper wire, and plastic tubing. Bernard's experiment won gold at the National Science Expo in 2014. And while still in grade 11 at the time, he was offered bursaries to two top South African universities. What was your hypothesis when you started this project? My hypothesis was that it is possible to generate electricity by magnetizing magnetotactic bacteria and using it in a Faraday application. Magnetotactic bacteria? Faraday's application? Now that's quite a mouthful. Yet in the world of science, they're well understood. In 1831, a British scientist, Michael Faraday, discovered that voltage, in other words, electricity, is generated when a magnet is moved through a looped coil of copper wire. It is the basic law of electrical technology. Generators and transformers, as well as electrical motors, are based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. On the other hand, magnetotactic bacteria can only be seen under a microscope. American scientists first described them in 1975. Note how they change direction depending on which pole of a magnet is pointed at them. Magnetotactic bacteria are sensitive to the Earth's magnetic field because they have iron grains in their cells that form chains, known as magnetosomes. They also have little tails or flagella that help them to move. What's really interesting is, is that the bacteria in the southern hemisphere aligns with the magnetosomes towards the northern hemisphere and vice versa on the northern hemisphere. Bernard's science teacher, Karen de Beer, says she was amazed when he asked her about Faraday's law. I explained simple principles to him, but he made his own unique method of um, all the things to see his disposal and he came up with a wonderful, wonderful idea which is absolutely unique. He's a real good scientific researcher. He never gives up. He constantly wonders about things and once he starts experimenting with them, he continues to look for the answer until he has a, he is satisfied with the results he achieved. Bernard's research started here, at the neighborhood dam in the east of Pretoria. He isolated the magnetotactic bacteria by placing a magnet in a container and submerged it for 15 minutes in the water. The sample always has to be collected from shallow water, says Bernard. Why shallow water? Magnetotactic bacteria need certain amounts of oxygen. So if you look at a water profile, the Oxygen decreases the deeper we go, but the sulfate increases the deeper we go. Now, at a certain depth, there's optimal concentration of oxygen and sulfate. So the bacteria at the top swim down towards the zone, and the bacteria at the bottom swim upwards to, to reach optimal growth conditions. And this zone only forms at a shallow depth. Back at the lab, Bernard prepared several different mediums to cultivate the magnetotactic bacteria and to separate out the non-magnetic particles in the water sample. The University of Pretoria made its electron microscope available to enable him to verify that he had indeed cultivated the correct type of bacteria. So the 17-year-old sat down in front of the multi-million rand microscope, apparently totally unintimidated. Well, I were in grade 11 when I first started at the University of Pretoria, but I weren't in intimidated. I were just excited to see the results. And the, the professors and doctors who helped me were very positive. The one thing that was really striking is that it was all his work. So that is really why we felt that we should get involved, because we actually only supplied the support. 
the results were positive. There was magnetotactic bacteria in the water, and Bernard knew he was on the right track. Finally, it was time to apply Faraday's law of induction. This is a, a fridge magnet, which I bought from an art shop, and I've placed it on a tube like this. And the reason why I use the magnet is to magnetize the magnetosomes or the iron particles inside the bacteria so that the bacteria can become magnetic. Next, he built an induction tube. I, I use a stick like this one and copper wire and then I roll the copper wire on the stick like this and then I place the copper windings inside the tube to make the induction tube. The magnetizing tube was filled with water containing the bacteria and connected to a peristaltic pump. I pumped 80 milliliters of water constantly for 10 hours through the magnetizing tube and after that I have pumped the magnetized bacteria through the induction tube for another three days. This proved his hypothesis. 0.05 microamperes were generated. But within three days, Bernard was able to generate an average of 0.31 microamperes. It's not yet enough to light up a bulb, but Bernard has big plans for the future. With this research, I hope to light up South Africa.